and it's dark and dark so clearly I will lift my eyes to lies from whence my help come my help it comes from you lead me oh lead me oh lead me to where I've never been before a place I've never seen before when I Myself. Father, carry me. Father, carry me. Yeah. When I come to the, come to the end of myself. Father, carry me. One Seventh Day Adventist Church Youth Department invites you to its second episode of Color Paint and Talk AY program. Come relax, create art, and talk about how life's challenges have affected your mental health. Join us this Sabbath at 4 p.m. on the church grounds on Glendavon Road. All are invited. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. See you there. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another AOI program, which promises to be great. Now, as we are going to begin, we will be starting with our opening hymn, I Will, earn, I will Early Seek the Savior, which is 539. Please join me in singing. I will early seek the Savior, I will learn of him each day. I will follow in his footsteps. I will walk the narrow way. For he loves me, yes, he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I I will hasten where he bids me. I'm come to, to go in the pathway where he leadeth, not to young his will to know. For he loves me, yes, he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. He is standing at the doorway of escape from every sin. I will knock for he has promised. He will hear and let me in. For he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. Thank you for your lovely singing. Scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible.
The church prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and this morning for this program. Amen. Amen. And for the AY drill. Aim, well, it is all the world in my generation. Pledge, loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the work of that, doing what I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. Motto, tells me song Good afternoon, AY. Good afternoon. It's good to see you all today. Now, for today's AY program, we are going to be focusing on a specific or a very special activity. For the entire month, we have been focusing on mental health, or we've been doing a mental health series, and we thought it fit to end the month with a meditative and somewhat talk ther therapy, so we will we'll comprise both to be a therapeutic activity to end the month to handle or to help persons deal with the various challenges that were identified. So over the month, we looked at depression and anxiety, we looked at suicide ideation, and we looked at men mental health, men's mental health, sorry. And all those challenges that we, all those topics that we spoke about would have raised various issues and challenges in our um, respective population and we know for a fact that persons are struggling so we have decided to do a color paint or well we won't be doing the paint so we'll be focusing on color paint sorry color color and talk activity right why color and talk well most times when we engage in a meditative activity we find that we are relaxed and we are more open and it's easier for us to express our feelings, right? Adding that with a talk therapy will help you to even open up even more to share whatever challenges you are faced with because you'll be in a meditative state. So hence we have combined both talk therapy and color or meditative or art therapy, right? Persons will be placed in various groups based on the number of you that are in here, and you'll be assigned a specific counselor who will be talking with you and guiding you through the various activities that we'll be doing, right? So the goal of today's program is to initiate a sense of belonging or relatability through understanding by sharing common experiences or experiences. And the objectives are to create a space for meditation and to identify and change in accurate or distorted thinking patterns, emotional responses, and behaviors to improve positive thinking and behaviors. So groups will be formed with members of, groups will be formed with no more than six persons, 
right? So I'm going to be announcing the requirements for each group and so long as, you, so long as these um, requirements apply to you, I'm asking you to just um, form the group. Form the group and you're, you'll be, or your respective council will be announced, all right? So persons who fall between the age range 12 to 15, we're going to ask you to stand and come to my left at the front. If you are within the age group 12 to 15, please make your way to the front, to the left. Right. All right, the next age range is persons who are 16 to 19. So if you fall within this age range, I'm going to ask you to come to my right at the front. 16 to 19. To my right at the front. To my right to the front, 16 to 19. Persons who are 20 to 30, rather, please stand at that passage area right there. 20 to 30. Twenty to thirty. I'm still looking at a lot of twenty-year-olds and persons within that age range. Rochelle, what's the age range? So why are you still sitting around the back? Shananka, what's the age range? Come on, make it quickly. Twenty to thirty over that side. All right, persons who are. 30 to 40 at that door to my right. 30 to 40. And persons who are 41 and over, please stand to the back. So let me re, 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 um, let me reiterate the instructions. Can I have it a bit quiet, please? May I have it a bit quiet, please? Thank you, Attila. All right, so just to reiterate again, Persons who are 12 to 15, please make your way to my left at the front. Persons who are 16 to 19, to my right at the front. Persons who are 20 to 30, at the left door. Persons who are 30 to 40, at the right door. And persons who are 40, 41. 31. Yes, it's... All right. 31 to 40. I still don't see y'all moving. 31 to 40 at the back. All right. The counselor who will be assigned. Guys, if you do not listen, you will not be able to hear the instructions. Persons who are 31 to 40. Your counselors will be Carolyn and Siobhan. So Carolyn and Siobhan, yeah. The groups will be, yeah, they will be separated. Persons who are 20, so 20 to 30, your counselor will be Kishana. Persons who fall within the age range 16 to 19, 
Your counselor will be Moisha and Kamarla. And Attila. And persons who are 41 and over, your counselor will be Anissa Bingham. Twelve to fifteen, Natasha. Thirty to forty. Round somewhere around there, so.
program today and uh, now that our brethren are inside they've been separated and they're in their various um, groups talking about various issues I will be facilitating the online audience which is you all right so feel free to post your comments in the chat and I will acknowledge as best as I can all right so the objectives oh sorry my name is Alex Walker and I will be taking you through a very nice uh, presentation today. All right, so the objectives of the program are to create a space for meditation and to identify and change inaccurate or distorted thinking pattern patterns, emotional responses, and behaviors to improve positive thinking and behaviors. 
that's the object those are the objectives of our present of our program for today the objectives of this presentation is to talk about meditative therapy what is meditative therapy why do meditative therapy or why meditate and we'll be talking about the benefits of meditative therapy additionally we'll be talking about talk therapy what is talk therapy why do we need to talk or engage in talk therapies and some of the benefits of talk therapy all right so we get right into our presentation what comes to mind when you hear meditating or meditation or meditative therapy the definition i have here is that it is a method of relaxation and consciousness consciousness expansion by focusing on a mantra right and a mantra includes positive words for example i will not let fear defeat me or get to me one of my mantra is that i will not worry about things that i cannot change right so mantras are positive self-affirmations that you will you know repeat over and over in in the case of a meditative therapy or keywords sounds or images while eliminating outside stimuli from one's awareness so you eliminate everything that can affect you in a negative manner right while you meditate on all the positive things that you can imagine all right some examples of meditative therapy include meditate meditation as the word um suggests body scan exercises right and body scan exercises or activities include mentally scanning yourself from time to time to bring awareness to every aspect of your body noticing aches pains tensions or general discomfort so from time to time i will feel a little tenseness i mean i know there is a professional aspect of body scan exercises but since we're doing it in our normal state i'm using myself as an example from time to time i will feel my a little ache in my body and that will tell me that i'm not relaxed or i need to i need to ease up some pressure off myself so i will you know stretch and i will close my eyes and i will just visualize and i'll be able to identify various aspects of my being that is probably not in that i'm not in touch with or that will contribute to me feeling stressed or overwhelmed right so that's what body scan exercise um speaks about speaks about you have mindfulness practices right and mindfulness mindfulness practices includes breathing methods and others others that would help you to relax so from time to time you know if you are overwhelmed or you feel stressed you will pause and you will breathe in and breathe out breathe in and breathe out right so that's a mindfulness practice mindfulness stretching right mindfulness stretching is constantly or involves constantly moving your joints through their full or past their full range of motion at least three to five days so these are stretches that you would normally do like you're going to work out you do some stretches but probably more vigorous than that so you would you you would stretch your your hands all the way around here and oftentimes when we do these things it helps us to relieve or release tension from our bodies right and studies have shown that meditation or involving these practices you know helps us to be or remain relaxed so the images that i have showing here or that should be showing on screen demonstrates an example of mindfulness breathing right so the top image shows the in the cartoon it depicts that the woman is breathing in or she's inhaling and she's exhaling right and the bottom image would demonstrate what mindfulness stretches or mindfulness stretching is about so it's like you're extending or you're stretching your body in a way beyond what you normally would right and as i mentioned before you utilize this type of stretching when you're probably um preparing to exercise like jog or you warm down after you've completed your exercise activities right some examples of meditation activities now what do you think are some examples of meditation activities i'm hoping to see some responses here online not yet seeing any but i'll just continue some examples of meditation activities include adult coloring books which is one of the activities that we'll be engaged in today today where persons are engaged in coloring 
you know and that studies have have shown that this actually helps with relaxing the brain and so forth but we'll get more into that as we proceed into our presentation crafts example knitting now we understand why our grandparents like to you know knit or there's this other term that they they use i can't remember it right now or they, they'll do embroidery or anything that they, they like to sew and i guess it i guess it's because it's it helps them so you know to re crochet right that's the word crochet right they'll, they'll engage in crocheting and all of that because it actually helps them to remain calm and it gives them that sense of relax or relaxation right gardening gardening actually helps to you know helps you to meditate and it helps to because you're engaged and you're focusing on you know digging the dirt and planting and you're doing you're doing something that takes your mind off everyday activity of everyday activity every other well everyday activity right so engaging in gardening it 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 soothes your it soothes you as you as you look forward to doing it or as you engage in the activity or everything that it brings and then too when you garden some people like to plant tomatoes or sweet peppers or any little thing that involves gardening you realize that you when you see what it bears or what it produces you feel at, at peace and you feel at ease because you're proud of your um of what you would have planted shopping is another um, meditative activity right i know people like to stress shop whenever they feel overwhelmed they um they they shop right and going for a walk is actually another meditative activity exercising is another meditative activity and what these things do is that they help you to it helps to boost your boost your mood so you may feel worried or you may feel stressed about a particular situation but as soon as you will engage in educate um exercising activities you it's like you you've lifted an entire burden off your shoulders because that's just what exercising does reading as well helps to soothe your mind it helps to calm you and that's another meditation or meditative activity crossword or puzzle books is another meditative activity all right so what are some benefits of meditative activities i think we would have discovered some of these as we would have been going through the presentation it helps with anxiety disorders it helps with persons who are struggling with depression or with depression associated with other medical illnesses right it helps to boost the mood and it helps with persons who may constantly feel unhappy and it helps to relax the mind right so as you would have already known or realized the activity or meditative activity that we'll be doing today or that we've been doing today is coloring right and why coloring coloring takes your attention away from yourself and stressful events and onto present moment events right it relaxes the brain so i learned about this activity in a course that i did two years ago the course was stress management at university and i realized that when i so it was it, it com the course comprised we were supposed to create a portfolio um doing various activities so we had coloring gardening exercising and it's you know funny it's after i learned that or through the course rather i learned that all these activities are meditative activities and they help to relieve and release stress it helps with calming you and it helps even if you're struggling with anxiety these activities actually keeps you or helps to keep you sane so coloring 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 helps to take your mind away from everyday happenings things that are happening around the world you know things that may be challenging you or causing you to struggle if you take up a coloring book or a piece of coloring material and you just engage in coloring it takes your mind to a different place worse if you are listening to some meditative music it helps to take your mind off stressful events right additional benefits of coloring right coloring helps to improve brain function functioning because when you're coloring different parts of your brain cerebral 
hemispheres are activated right and as you choose your various colors your brain's creativity is activated right it improves a meditative state or it improves a meditative state it improves sleeping i remember when i some time ago i and i've engaged in coloring before sleep and i'm telling you it's some of the best sleeps i've had right so it really does help to improve sleep as we would have discovered throughout the presentation as well it helps to reduce anxiety and it helps to relieve stress right if you have not yet started um practicing coloring i'm happy that i'm able to raise awareness for you to get it going because from time to time you know we struggle with various things Sometimes we feel so overwhelmed and we feel bombarded but we can find things to help us to alleviate the challenges and the stresses that will come right so at some point too we will need to pause and just reflect and relax it helps and it, it, it boots that self-care aspect of you that you ought to practice right but why do you pause or why should you pause why meditate or better question why do we go through the things that we go through have you ever thought about that yes we know that sin exists and you know we are bound to going through trials and tribulations but studies show that we are factors of our systems right as an individual you are affected by your church your church families your church relationships you are affected by your community what, whatever happens within your various communities that you're a part of, you're affected by that. It has, an, it has the opportunity to affect you mentally or psychologically, which includes mental um, challenges or emotional challenges. It, your friends affect you. The home environment affects you. School that you attend will affect you from time to time. Work will from time to time affect you work issues work, work challenges you're not getting on with your with your supervisor you're not getting along with your um co-workers media social media has the potential or the um it has a tendency to to affect us right every day you get up and you go on social media you see news of persons being persons dying you know all those things can affect you family the family that you're a part of has the tendency to um affect you beach and swim comes to mind okay auntie joan i know you like to swim at the beach so of course those things will will i know i understand those a lot because swimming actually even though it wasn't listed in my presentation it helps to give you um that or bring you to that state of meditation right it is very famous too that some of the things that we go through starts within our minds so what we think affects how we feel and how we feel affect our behavior and it's like a cycle that continues until you are provided with the appropriate intervention or you are provided with the appropriate help that you need to overcome the various challenges um, that you will go through right when we talk about thoughts and it affecting our emotions and our behaviors, we have what is called psychotherapy that helps us to combat um, all those challenges, right? So as we know, thoughts influence behavior or thoughts influence feelings and feelings influence behavior and behavior influence thoughts. And it's a cycle that continues over and over and over again until, as I said, you are provided with the appropriate methods or intervention or strategies to overcome these things and some of or one strategy that can be used to help us to overcome or combat the issues that are associated with associated with our thoughts and our feelings and our behaviors are psychotherapies right what is a psychotherapy psychotherapy sometimes called talk therapy is a term for a variety of treatment techniques that aim to help a person identify and change troubling emotions thoughts and behavior most psychotherapy takes place with a licensed trained mental health professional and a patient meeting one-on-one -on -one or with other patients in a group setting and 
as I go into this aspect of the presentation, you'll understand why we have incorporated a talk with our color activity because thoughts influence feelings and feelings influence behaviors and oftentimes when we don't get to talk about these things you know they bottle up and we continue to struggle sometimes alone and that struggle leads to depression it leads to stress and it leads to other mental issues and then if not treated we end up die right as a result of suicide or depression can um cause us to encounter other illnesses right sometimes stress causes us to feel sick right and those things can cause us to lose our lives right so some types of talk therapies include cognitive behavioral therapy which is an approach that helps people learn how to identify and replace destructive or disturbing thought patterns that have a negative influence on behavior and emotions to positive and fulfilling thoughts so in other words as we are aware thoughts influence feelings and feelings influences behavior right what cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT does it it helps you to identify negative thoughts that are affecting you and it helps you to while identifying those negative thoughts to replace or seek out ways to replace those thoughts of course it will get to the bottom of why you are having this thought or these thoughts but it helps you to replace those negative thoughts with positive ones positive affirmations so for example instead of saying i'm a mess okay alex why do you think that you're a mess you'll talk about it but the counselor will help you to replace that negative thought with something that something more like i am a human being right and we know that humans are prone to making mistakes so not because you make a mistake it doesn't mean that you're a mess right these things happen another example includes i'm a failure right instead of thinking or condoning the thought that you're a failure that thought will be replaced with i am learning you try and it doesn't work out you get up and you try again right because again we're human beings we're prone to making mistakes and when the mistakes happen it is natural for us to feel like oh i'm not good enough or oh i'm a failure i failed but these things happen it's a part of the growing process it's a part of our humanness right but it is important to understand that while these things happen and you may fail from time to time you are not a failure right you are learning and it's through learning that you probably not make those mistakes again but you will make other mistakes and then it's from making those mistakes that you would have learned from when you make the other mistakes you will understand that you are indeed learning and these things will happen from time to time right you can replace another thought that says i'm not enough right instead of saying i am not enough you can say i am more than enough right because god made me that way right i am his royal priesthood he has told me who i am in his word right the you can you can incorporate things like you know you have unique attributes that makes you enough right these things make you who you are all right so that covers the aspect of the cognitive behavioral therapy in a nutshell it is identifying negative thoughts and replacing them with positive ones and that's really this therapy is what we're focusing or some techniques within this therapy we'll be focusing on for our activity for today so persons will be opening up and sharing or it is the hope that persons will open up and share challenges that they may be having and negative thoughts or self-talk that they may be harboring and the counselors will be using ways to and techniques and strategies to help them to replace those negative thoughts because they are not that right they are this so they are more than enough they are able to accomplish great things they are more than conquerors right so that is the aspect or that will cover um cognitive behavioral therapy the next type of um, talk therapy includes rational emotive behavioral therapy which is an approach that's focused on helping people deal with irrational beliefs and learning how to manage their emotions thoughts and behaviors in a healthier 
more realistic way. So from time to time, we will have uh, thinking habits or thoughts that we harbor about ourselves, rational beliefs that contribute to us feeling depressed or having depressive symptoms, contributes to us um, having anxiety symptoms, contributes to us have, being in a state of um, stressed state contributes to us being in a stressed state so what this therapy does is it helps you to identify those irrational beliefs things that are not true that you constantly think about and it helps you to replace those beliefs with beliefs that are actually true right and the final one that we'll be looking at is the person-centered therapy which is a non-directive form of talk therapy that allows clients to take the lead in discussions so that in the process they will discover their own solutions right the therapies in this the therapist in this case or in these cases acts as a non-judgmental compassionate facilitator so they probe you they allow you to talk right and they listen to you and then while you are talking you when you're in your expressing may realize that you know that i'm not this for real or you know that this that happened was genuinely a mistake yes so that's how these um talk therapies work right so here's an example of how our thoughts affect us and how we feel and our behavior right so example you think I'm not good enough, good enough. Or as a matter of fact, you had a situation, a trigger. You had a, a bad experience at church or you had a bad experience at home before you came to church or you had a bad experience at work because those are the factors that influence or our behavior influences how we, how we react or how we see ourselves or how we operate, right? So you had a, had a situation where you were criti criticized or criticized at work and you immediately thought i'm not good enough so that one situation caused you to think that you are not good enough that triggered a worthless emotion right feeling worthless causes you to isolate yourself and then the cycle continues it continues until that thought that you are not you are not good enough is replaced so until that thought is is replaced you will continue to feel worthless and you'll continue to feel isolated right you you just take yourself away from everybody else because you feel like you are not good enough another example so we have negative thoughts and negative thoughts as we know creates all sorts of negative as the word puts it negative feelings right so negative thoughts create doubts worries which produces unpleasant feelings and those unpleasant feelings further pushes you to feeling stressed or depressed or anxious right and then those further further um, emotions or feelings pushes you to participate in negative activities as a way of you don't know how to appropriately express yourself so you participate in things that will seem to be you 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 feel comfortable enough to feel like you're expressing yourself or this is a way for you to communicate how you are feeling but you're not really communicating how you're feeling and then you feel demotivated and then you confirm within yourself that yes i am a failure for real so that negative thought that you harbor that posits that you are a negative you sorry you are worthless or you are a failure you know creates that creates doubts and it causes you to worry and wonder if you're really a failure for real and then though that feeling causes you to 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 feel even worse within yourself and then all of those things contribute to you feeling stressed you know anxious depressed and all those negative um, feelings so now we understand or see how for instance since that this is what we're focusing on today the CBT or the cognitive behavioral therapy will work right you identify these issues and it helps you to communicate your issues or your challenges or your feelings in an appropriate way so instead of for instance I'm going to use this example because it's very common in our society you now persons will probably engage in bleaching their skin because they they, have, they feel low within themselves they have a lack of self-confidence or they feel that sense of low self-esteem they rub and they bleach because they don't feel pleased about themselves right and they continue on and they continue on and they continue on and 
until somebody actually reaches out to them to get to the bottom of why they will probably participate in that activity you won't understand what's going on in their mind what they're expressing so the negative feelings that they probably feel from within you know feeling like they're not good enough causes them to act out it causes them to behave in an in, a, in an inappropriate manner all right so how really does cbt works first it works by helping you to identify the negative thoughts that you may be harboring or that you will have right and then it helps you to create replacement thoughts right when you replace those negative thoughts you practice positive self-talk right so for instance you feel i am a mess as mentioned earlier of course we're going to get to the bottom of why you feel like you're a mess but while we discover and we reveal all the emotions and feelings that causes you to feel like you're a mess we also help you to understand that you are not a mess and you are a human being and humans are prone to making mistakes right it also helps you as i said helps you to identify why those thoughts exist and then you know you are you are aware or you become aware of why or what your triggers are so you feel like you're not good enough what causes you to feel like you're not good enough probably when a friend says something that they probably don't mean in a negative way but you you take it and you internalize it and you feel like they meant it in that particular way so you say okay i'm not good enough probably within your home right because remember again the, the systems that we're a part of influences our behavior right so within your home probably you you don't have a good relationship with your mother or your father and they say something to you and that triggers your feelings and you feel okay i'm not good enough or they spoke to you in a in a derogative way and you feel okay i'm not good enough right so while you understand or we we, we realize that okay this is the trigger you develop now coping strategies to help you to understand that okay don't think about it from a negative light because probably that's not what they meant and in when if, even when they say you're not good enough or you're worthless or you're this you know within yourself that you are not that and you're not this so you believe the positive thoughts that you would have replaced um then replaced with the negative ones right or replaced with the positive ones right and it helps you as i just said to deal with them so repeating again the cognitive behavioral th therapy helps you to identify negative thoughts as you identify the negative thoughts you create replacement thoughts right and as you create replacement thoughts you practice positive self-talk right it also helps you to identify why those thoughts exist it helps you to become aware of the triggers what triggers these thoughts and it helps you to deal with them as they come all right as we would have understood uses of cbt it helps you to replace negative thinking patterns it teaches practical strategies that can be used in everyday life so you can always count on positive affirmations to carry you through everyday living right it challenges you to overcome automatic beliefs our minds are always working we're always thinking so if we want to think positively we have to um we have to keep positive things in our lives that will help us to think positively right it helps to treat mental illnesses or treat persons with mental illnesses like depression anxiety and pt ptsd we know that all of these sometimes are they're stemming from life events things that would have triggered us happenings or surroundings and all of that so it helps you to replace thoughts that can help you to maneuver negative circumstances negative situations and it helps you to think positive so you could be sitting here and you also bond down, but you'll be thinking so positively that you know like i like i always like to say one of my mantras if i can't change it i'm not going to worry about it so fine my house is burning down i can't out the fire i can't do anything to prevent it from burning down so i'm just going to think positive i'm going to pray and i'm going to leave it in the hands of god right all right so now for activity i hope that you would have learned something and 
I hope that you would have prepared to participate in today's activities by clicking on the link that was shared on our social media platforms to download an image from our Google Drive. If you don't or didn't do that, we have an additional link. It may not be as fulfilling as the actual image that you'll be coloring, but we have a link that we'll be sharing with you shortly that you can click on and you will just choose an image of your choice. So the image should be posted in the YouTube chat or Facebook chat in the description chat rather in the description and you can just click on it and scroll through and select an image of your choice right and then you'll just go through and as you color I want you to reflect on a challenge or an issue that you may be currently faced with right so some common issues include esteem where you may be struggling with insecurities low self-esteem low self-confidence right some persons may be struggling with grieving the loss of a loved one and it doesn't necessarily have to be the death of someone per se but you you want you you and a family member have fell out or you and a friend are you and a, you are no longer friends with someone you know those things can contribute to you grieving so you can you know jot that down as well you may be having relationship issues financial issues career issues you may be feeling empty you may be feeling broken or you may be having a spiritual warfare and you may be dealing with a health crisis right so as you think about what your current challenges are i'm going to ask you to get another blank paper and I really hope that you, you're participating in this activity, you know. I really, really hope that you're participating. So make sure that you've clicked the link. Let me see if it has been posted. Alright, so while we wait on the link to come up, I'm imploring you to... Okay, I'm told it's there. So I'm praying and I'm imploring you to click on the link and select an image and navigate through it the colors are there and you just color as you go along but while you're doing so and even though it takes away this online activity takes away from the physical one i hope that it will help it will help you to actually participate in a, in a meaningful way so i want you to get another blank paper and i want you to list some challenges or one challenge identify one challenge that you may be struggling with currently and I want and you'd want to start working on that and I want you to write down some negative thoughts that you may have about that situation so the instructions are again while you select your image to color don't I know that it's it's online and it may be hard to navigate but don't overthink it because that will take away from the meditative aspect of it so just take your time relax and just go through right and just breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out about five times and just get through your coloring and while you do that think about a challenge that you may be faced with think about an issue that you're having as i as i said before it could be a steam issue where you have low self-confidence or you're struggling with low self-esteem or you're struggling with insecurities it could be that you're grieving the loss of a loved one even the loss of a friendship even the loss of a broken relationship with you and a family member it could be that you're going through a financial crisis health crisis you may be feeling broken feeling empty whatever the challenges are think about it and write down that challenge and write down the negative emotions or negative thoughts that you may have about that particular situation and be as transparent as you can be as honest as you can with yourself because in order for you to overcome negative self self thought or negative thinking patterns you have to be open and you have to accept and you have to acknowledge that you are actually harboring these thoughts all right while i leave you to do that we're going to pause here and i will come back in about five minutes time to check on the progress all right
thank you for staying with us and thank you for tuning in thus far I can get up.
Welcome back everyone. I am back with you. Alright, so I know that wouldn't have been enough time for you to color the image if you actually went, you know, and located an image to color to participate in our activity. And for those of you who would have been coloring already, I'm not sure if you would have gotten to the, the end of your activity, but we're coming to a close with our presentation and I'm just going to share a practical way on how you can reshape your thinking. So 
let's reshape our thinking. I will be using the SWOT analysis, which is a method that helps us to identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and strength and, and th threats. Sorry, it's usually used to assess um, agencies or organizations, but it can also be used in your personal time or in your personal life to assess how you are and areas that you would like to work on um, what opportunities do you have to do so what strengths do you have what are your threats and what are your weaknesses all right so let's look at spiritual warfare for example that's your current weakness right what's a strength that you could identify all right so let's work with even though we're struggling spiritually there is hope in god right so that's a strength nothing is impossible with god as the scripture tells us in luke 1 verse 37 so okay we know that that's a strength what are your opportunities to working on the spiritual warfare that you're going through at the moment you can pray about the situation you can surround yourself with like-minded christian people people who will help you to get that spiritual up upliftment of course you'll be doing work on your own by praying and spending time in the word of god and just trying to grow as best as you can while you try to overcome the various struggles that you may be faced with as a christian right what are the threats what causes you to 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 be having a spiritual warfare all right life's challenges life's challenges it can can affect us in in a way that causes us to encounter or go through a spiritual warfare love for worldly pleasures can also cause us to you know go through a spiritual warfare but we have or we can take pride in the strength that we have within ourselves that we have a god who will not leave us nor forsake us right not because it is written but because we know that god is true and we know that he doesn't lie and if he has said so then it goes so right so nothing is impossible with god and we can believe that and we can affirm that and we can have faith in that right opportunities you pray about the situation surround yourself with people who can help you to grow in a manner or in a way that will help you to overcome the challenges or the struggles that you may be going through it may be difficult for you to read the bible and it may be difficult for you to pray sometimes but if you find a friend a good christian friend that you have that you can talk to about these challenges that's an opportunity for you to overcome the battle or the struggle with spiritual warfare right and as we close off our presentation let's learn to funnel or channel our thoughts and we can use this method right you can make a note of it as you go through the first thing to overcoming negative thought is awareness recognize what is happening recognize that it is happening right the next phase feel your feelings you are entitled to your feelings you are entitled to how you feel situations will come from time to time and nobody can tell you how to think or how to feel about the situation but you can overcome the negative thought while you are aware of it by accepting what is happening accepting the reality of it and feel the feelings that you are feeling you are entitled to those feelings so deal with it feel the hurt and i don't want to sound insensitive but get over it so recognize what is happening feel your feelings accept what's it what is happening and those two things will help you to be more cognizant that you are having a negative thought or you are having or you are engaging in negative self thought self talk and you can right you can overcome um the feelings or challenges with that make a plan you recognize what is happening and you accept what is happening work towards don't dwell in the feeling don't live in the feeling don't harbor the feeling it's okay to feel what you're feeling it's okay to have these thoughts from time to time but work on overcoming them right it's a part of our human nature to think negatively from time to time but work towards overcoming them 
the next aspect is to ask for help ask for help seek appropriate help seek professional help seek a friend that you can con confide in and talk to about the challenges that you may be having seek um a church member seek a family member seek a therapist right that can help you to overcome the challenges that you may be faced with accept the support right be open to receiving the support be open to seeking the appropriate help to overcome the challenges that you will be facing and maintain a positive mindset so as you go through all these phases it can amount to you maintaining a positive mindset right to help you to reshape your thinking to eliminate negative thoughts right so instead of saying i'm not good enough or i'm a failure or everyone is better than me or i will never succeed say i am worthy i am always learning to become better and i do my best to do so so believe that you are worth it you are worthy because god says you are right instead of saying there's no point in life the world is unfair say that you are powerful and you and that can influence your life right the world can be a fair place for me everything may not be going how you want it to but you have a father who has made this world and you can trust in him to take you through right i hope that as we come to the end of this presentation that you would have benefited from it and even though the time was not enough for you to have participated in the activities that I hope that you would have understand or you'd have gained an understanding as to how you can better help yourself to overcome negative talk and develop coping strategies to understand that from time to time you will have negative thoughts but you can overcome them right practice um, positive self-talk and most of all believe that you are who god says you are and not your circumstances not your situations neither your challenges all right thank you so much for tuning in to this aspect of the presentation we'll be now going back to our in-house audience we'll be hearing or allowing them to share their experiences all right please stay tuned
if you are able to hear me, I am asking you to settle down. Remember, we are still in the house of the Lord. So we're asking you to settle down as we wrap up the AY program. Thank you. We're live? Oh. All right. So our online audience, I want to thank you so patiently for staying with us as we would have wrapped up things on... On the inside here, we're going to be having a mini interview just to have persons to share their experiences, you know, the highlights or how they were impacted. And now we'll be having Dante Prince, who was in the age range or the group with the age range of 16 to 19. And we're just going to ask him to share his experience. Dante, what was the highlight of your meditative and talk therapy? Um, well, we talked about many things, you know. We stopped on, like, sex. Then we talked about mental health and one whole works and stuff. But the biggest one today, I went with there to talk about um, which one did kind of worse. We did talk about which one kind of worse um, if men are, which one worse? Men cheating or when a woman cheat? That, that, that did spark a big conversation between me. And that, yeah, it is it, it just very interesting for you, my fellow... So what was the conclusion, and how did it impact you? Well, um, the conclusion towards it would be so basically, a woman cheating more, kind of like, hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a woman cheating more, we kind of hurt more than a man cheating. Um, and what we kind of get from it is that, um, well, you kind of tell myself, so, nah, you have to like, firm, you have to have a strong mentality, like when them they come towards you, you have to like have a hit on your body because me personally, if me get cheated on, I would have mad, I would have bad, I would have go crazy and all sorts of stuff, but yeah. So you guys had that conversation um, for when you were older or you're speaking from, from your current state of age? Uh, Are you saying that? Current state of age. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. So the highlight for you was that you have to have a good state of mind so that you can overcome challenges. I'm trying to get the connection. Basically. All right, all right, and this is the conclusion for everybody who participated in your group. Well, not everybody, because the females, them did I say, um, the men cheating more kind of like hurt more, but from the male's perspective in my group, we never really see that. We just say, yeah. Basically, if anybody has all cheat, somebody has got hurt, but still, a woman cheating more, to me, yeah. All right, so happen. since there was a clash between both males and females, what was the takeaway? What was the takeaway? What was the impact from the session? The coloring that aided in, you know, helping you to relax and talking about that challenge of men versus women cheating. Um, well, the major impact from that, we just, Carly said, cheating is unnecessary in a sense, so... If nobody for cheat, just don't do it. I just break up with your partner and go about your business and do whatever else. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for You're sharing. Welcome. All right. At this point, we're going to be calling up Sushana, who will be speaking from the group or the age range group, 31 to 40, and she'll be sharing her experience or the impact. Hi, Miss Sushana. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. You seem a little tense. You all right? <laughs> Not so. I'm tense. Okay. All right. So just going to ask you one question. Share with us the impact or the highlight from your session. All right. I learned that not every. I learned that everyone have the same. Actually, have the same problems in situations, and also I learned that um, to be more patient because. I'm, I'm not a person that is patient with things. 
doing the, the, the coloring, it actually give me the, the calmness to color and to feel like, okay, I have to take more time to do what I'm doing, not rush over everything. And also I learned to actually, to control my temper. Yeah. So the coloring aided or it triggered that aspect of you or yes. it helped you to be more patient, it helped you to meditate and it helped you to relax. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for You're sharing. Welcome. All right. So and at this time we'll be having Shananka who will be sharing her experience and she's representing the age group 12 to 15. Hi, speak in the mic, turn it on. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. How was your experience in your session? My experience was good. Just good? It was great. What was the highlight? <laughs> highlight? A lot of things. What stood out for you? What stood out of... Um, like, we shouldn't have sex at the young age because men are wicked. <laughs> okay. All right. That was the only thing that stood out for you? No. That we sex outside of marriage <laughs> should not happen because men are wicked. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for sharing and representing your group. You're welcome. All right. At this point, we'll be having the counselor for the age range 31 to 40. 40 and over, sorry. Counselor, that group had two counselors because it was very mighty and one of the counselors was representing. So Attila, how are you? Speak up in the mic. Good afternoon. All right, I'm doing all right. Good, good. So talk to us about your session. I realize that you guys are the reason why we had to prolong the time. Right Tell us, me. how was the experience? Uh, honestly, it was an eye-opening experience. So the age range that we had was 40 and over. Now these, you know, these individuals would have watched myself and Anissa grow up. So we, we had our reservations because we were like, oh dear, we hope they're receptive to what we have to say. Right. But brethren, let me tell you. They were the best. <laughs> I sh I'm sure you can hear them in the background. That group of people, mm -hmm. they were the best. They were the best. What made it the best? What were some takeaways? What were some, what were, how were they impacted? They, firstly, they were honest and open, and I must say I really appreciate that. Um, being that most of them are 40 and over, they would have left school, you know, a little while ago. And... Just a little while, just the other day. And having these people be willing to sit down and do an elementary school or a pre-K activity such as coloring. And I spoke to them and I said, hey, think about when you were young and you didn't have bills, you didn't have children. And they were really able to tap into something with their inner child. And they colored the stress away, as they would have said. So I'm just really appreciative that they were receptive to everything that we did. Good, good. Big up to that group. And thank you for sharing. And we'll take our final person who will be a counselor from the group with age range 20 to 30.
Mike? Okay, we're good. Hi. Hi. How are you? I am well. Good, good. Can you talk to us about your experience during your session? So, um, I felt like we had a good time. In, we've explored a, a whole heap of topics. So, we talked about, you know, grieving, because there were some individuals that would have lost family members or friends. Um, we explored the pictures that we chose, why we chose them. We went into, you know, why young people leave the church. And we were sharing our experience and encouraging each other and on how we can. So while we were coloring, we were having these meaningful discussions. And I, f I felt impacted. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, they felt impacted as well. And I'm, sh I'm looking forward to the change, you know, for some of the individuals with what we've shared. And also, I feel like we're going to have this bond forever based on some of the things that we discussed. There are some individuals that I'm going to keep a close eye on because, you know, I want to follow up on some of the things that we explored. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And I know I said we take our final counselor, but we'll be taking one member of the big group who is Sister, Sister Clark Go? I hope I pronounced the name properly. And she'll just be sharing her experience. Thank you so much, um, Carlin. Alison, Alison, come and represent your group, Sister. Right. I see she cut her eye for me when she come up here, like she begs to share contact. Don't worry, I won't be asking any hard questions because I, I, I get the feeling that you're shy. But tell us, oh, well, just, just be real with us. What was, what was your experience like? Why did you enjoy? Why you never want we done the session? Why you wanted to go on and on? What was, what was, what was that moment like for you? Honestly, I know most people don't know me here, but it was real. I enjoyed the group because they just went, they just gave you all they had. They were honest. They were honest. Right. It Amen. was vibrant. It was just real. And I liked the group. I okay. loved the group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were there any, um, any specific advices that were given uh, like helpful tip, tips rather in coping with any challenges or so that were, that were identified um tips what can i say some of the some of the members what they said was that the coloring it just let them release and they weren't even thinking about the stress and the trials and we tried to go into what would normally stress you and some and and take time right we are to take time out for ourselves and our family and, and our partner ensure that we enjoy each other's company and we are to ensure that we we don't we don't blame it on not having time, but we are to find the, the time. time. Okay, very lovely. And I can hear the support from the audience. So I take it that it was a well-received session. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, see, that was very quick and over with. All right, we want to thank everyone so much for participating. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being involved. Thank you for be Hello, brethren. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for coming out, for sharing, for being open, for being transparent. I was a bit reserved or worried when I saw, you know, so much big people because I wondered if this would have really reached you. But hearing from you, I realized that it really impacted you, the young people as well. You know, this program, it wouldn't have been a success without you. And we just want to extend a great, a big, big thank you. So as we close off today's program, we're going to be handing over to Natalie Ellis, who will be doing a short Vespa talk, thought and praying.
Good evening, everyone. No man, after you had such a wonderful time, you can't be talking to me like this. Evening. All right, all right, all right, good. It was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And they laughed me to scorn down there because even now I don't finish coloring. So I'm going to take mine home <laughs> for homework. Yes, right, nothing is wrong with that. So to, to, do, to close off this evening's program, as Sister Walker mentioned, I'll just be giving a short Vesper charge. And to begin, I just have all of you stand. Please stand with me. And we will sing the first and last stanza of Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, and that's number four. So we'll do first and last. Sister Walker, do you have a microphone to just sing? Yes? Yes, my singer. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. I check one. That's number four. And we're doing first and last. Repeat the hymn again, please. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, number four. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to His feet I tribute bring, ransom healed. Thank you so much. You may all be seated. I'm going to be sharing from the devotional from one of Sister Ellen White's devotionals. I'm ye shall receive power. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And that comes from Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. If we have Christ abiding with us, we shall be Christians at home as well as abroad. He who is a Christian will have kind words for his relatives and associates. He will be kind, courteous, loving, sympathetic, and will be educating himself far and abroad with the family above. I'm sorry, educating himself for an abode, forgive me, with the family above. If he is a member of the royal family, he will represent the kingdom to which he is going. He will speak with gentleness to the children, for he will realize that they too are heirs of God, members of the heavenly court. Among the children of God, no spirit of harshness dwells, for the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. We must educate the soul to be pitiful, gentle, tender, full of forgiveness and compassion. While we lay aside all vanity, all foolish talking, jesting and joking, we are not to become cold, unsympathetic and unsocial. Christians should not be hard-hearted, unapproachable. Jesus is to be reflected in our deportment, and we are to have a character beautiful with the graces of heaven. 
The presence of God is to be an abiding presence with us. And wherever we are, we are to carry light to the world. Those around you, those around us, are to realize the atmosphere of heaven surrounds you, surrounds me, surrounds us. I pray that as we go through this week, we will understand who we are, recognize that we are God's children, and God's children are loving, they are compassionate. We love each other, not just members of the faith, but everyone we come in contact with. I pray that this, will, this little thought will remain with each and every one of us as we go throughout this week and throughout our entire Christian journey. God bless you, and I hope you'll have a wonderful, wonderful week. Stand with me as I close with prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we just want to thank you for a wonderful, uplifting, spirit-filled day. Thank you so much for giving us another opportunity to come within your courts and to come and be among each other so we can sharpen each other and so we can show love and show compassion to each other. As we go throughout this week, as we leave here, may you protect us, may you guide our steps. And may we keep you at the forefront of our minds in whatever it is that we do. And may at the end of it all, all glory be given to you and you alone. Bless us now. Guide us. Protect us, O oh Father, is my prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Save your breathe. Remember too that the health department is having a big sale occurring on the outside and they are craving your support. A very healthy